Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include the EU to help Ghana fight floods, improve canal and drain systems, fury as the EU sneers at Falklanders over right to stay British, EU is love that dare not speak its name for most Tories, says MP, private eyes to track down EU students who owe £50 million in loans, plus Spain is officially insolvent. Get your money out while you still can. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, the European Union is funding a study to help the South American country of Guyana control flooding. The EU said in a statement Saturday that it will help Guyana review its sea defence system since most of the country's population and infrastructure are on a narrow coastal belt that is already below sea level and floods often. Guyana has issued several recent public advisories warning of water coming over the five-foot cement sea wall in the capital of Georgetown. A senior Tory MP last night attacked outrageous claims that Europe does not recognise British sovereignty over the Falkland Islands. Andrew Rossendale hit out over a Spanish MEP's grovelling comment to Argentine politicians in Buenos Aires during trade talks. Daniel Filmus, head of Argentina's Foreign Affairs Committee, called on members of an EU delegation to press Britain to begin talks about sovereignty of the South Atlantic Islands. Last night, angry Mr Rossendale, a member of the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee, said the EU is encroaching on foreign affairs in a way that I would find absolutely outrageous. Most Conservatives support Britain staying in a reformed EU, but it is the love that dare not speak its name, says senior Tory MP. Former Defence Minister Peter Luff also warned that it was worrying that many pro-European Conservatives were now shying away from speaking out as Eurosceptics dominated the debate on Europe. Home Office Minister Damien Green joined him in calling on Tory advocates of EU membership to speak up. There are very good reasons why Britain is better off in and it's time to start explaining those reasons, said Mr Green. Eurosceptic MPs are seeking to force a vote in Parliament on legislation before the 2015 election for a referendum afterwards on EU membership. Private investigators have been called in to track down hundreds of overseas graduates from UK universities who have gone missing owing millions of pounds in loans bankrolled by the British taxpayer. The student loans company has been forced to take dramatic measures to claw back its money after the amount owed by European Union graduates who are not repaying their tuition fee loans rose to more than £50 million in five years. Hundreds of EU nationals who have returned home and reached the income threshold at which they should be paying back their loans have slipped into arrears. Many have failed to provide any salary details, so that officials cannot even start the process of reclaiming their debts. I had not noticed this until someone drew my attention to it, but the latest IMF Fiscal Monitor, published last month, comes about as close to declaring Spain insolvent as you're ever likely to see in official analysis of this sort. Of course, it doesn't actually say this outright, the IMF is far too diplomatic for such language, but that's the plain meaning of its latest forecasts, which at last have an air of realism about them, rather than being the usual dose of wishful thinking. Let's take the projected budget deficit first. This is expected to decline quite steeply this year to 6.6% of GDP, but that's mainly because the cost of bailing out the banking sector fell substantially on last year's budget. On a like-for-like -like basis, there has in fact been very little fall in the underlying deficit, and nor, on the present policy mix, is there ever likely to be, for that's where the deficit is projected to remain until the end of the IMF's forecasting horizon in 2018. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. 
We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced and so through the month of May I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entry by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either liked or disliked, but I'd prefer liked please, uh, and most importantly sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So without further ado, today's video which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist is America Has Fallen by Rick Thorne. I'm Rick Timmis. Reporting for the unit nightly news. I'll see you soon You can get lots more news stories and information on our website theunit.com You can get in touch with us there and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view You can follow us on Twitter our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google+, links to the community page, are below.